Hello again everybody, it's me, Madame Macabre, and welcome to the very first new video on this new channel. So for today's video, I thought I would go back and touch on something that ages ago, ages ago, I just started on my original channel, and I never really picked it back up again. And uh, the main reason I will pick it up now is because it is newly relevant. I am talking about when I started reading my diaries from when I studied abroad in Italy in 2012. See, I, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this, because I only did one reading of it ages ago, basically in 2012, I studied abroad in Italy. I left the country for the first time, and this was before I was actually even on YouTube, and I kept a diary, a blog, the entire time I was there, and I have not read these diaries since I posted them, so it's gonna be like opening a time capsule for me. I only got through day one and two, so everything beyond this point is going to be just fresh for me. And the main reason I say that this is relevant now is because I am actually going to be returning to Italy in mid to late March with my sister, and I'll be doing a lot of vlogging there. But I just thought it might be interesting to have this perspective of my first trip there before we go in and we enjoy the next trip. Hopefully this trip starts out smoother because uh, this last one, this last one was, it started kind of traumatic as, as you guys are about to find out in uh, entry day one and two. That's where we'll start with this thing. Oh boy, old writing. Let's see how much of a drama queen and hyperbole meister old me was, huh? Day one. Well, everyone knows that the getting there part of any trip sucks. The airplanes are usually uncomfortable, have bad food, and it's pretty difficult to adjust to the new time zones at first. Well, today was pretty much the worst experience I've ever had in my life. Hyperbole number one. Though it's not too much of a hyperbole, because this was ridiculously traumatic. I remember this. I have flashbacks of horror of this experience every time I'm about to travel somewhere else. I don't like airplanes to begin with. Hoy. To begin, I started out leaving Seattle for my 1.40 p.m. flight to Amsterdam. It started out just fine. I said goodbye to my parents at the airport and in no real hurry made it to my gate. I even chatted with a nice old couple who were on their way to Poland. Things only started to turn bad mildly at first. Due to tons and tons of travelers not having their stuff in order, boarding went very, very slowly. Needless to say, we were very late taking off. Our 1.40 p.m. flight did not leave until 2.30 p.m. Oh boy, this is what set into motion the panic for my connecting flight. Now, the flight wasn't too bad. The man sitting next to me was very polite and was actually very interesting to talk to as he was on his way back home to Mumbai. However, I didn't have nearly as much luck with the passengers in front of me. They were a little old French couple who seemed at first to be perfectly fine. But about a third into the flight, right as I was in the middle of simultaneously watching a movie and sketching in my book, the woman in front of me decided she needed to have a death match with the recliner button on her chair. Oh boy, those of you, those of you who fly often know this phenomenon, and those of you who don't, let me explain it for you. See, the way that airplane recliners work is there's a little button usually near the armrest that allows you to recline your chair only a couple inches because they cram you in there like sardines if you're not up in a business or first class. So they can't afford more than a couple inches, otherwise you're gonna smash the person behind you. And if you are like me, someone who is tall and has long limbs and like long legs even the couple inches they give you they still like touch your knees and like it, it gets very very cramped but there's a reason they only allow you a couple inches because otherwise I would be literally pinned back by the recliner in front of me anyway for the next five minutes she bashed the back of her chair into my knees knocked my sketchbook around and even hit me in the face several times with my TV screen I remember that because it was my glasses and it friggin hurt You'd think the feeling of literally knocking into somebody and them going, ow, would be enough cause for you to stop slamming around, but no. It was either she was senile and could not figure out how a recliner worked, or she would not be content until her entire recliner was laying in my lap. Now, eventually she settled down and I was able to adjust. 
And then about an hour later, I decided I would try and get some sleep. I got as comfortable as I could in my tiny seat, put on my sleep mask and my earplugs, and then attempted to slip into a very light slumber. However, I was suddenly jolted awake. It would seem the woman in front of me had discovered that the woman sitting behind me was also French, and she then proceeded to get up, stand right next to me, and scream a conversation in French to the woman she was standing right next to. Oh gosh, I'm still, I'm still salty as hell about this, because not only did she get up and have her butt right in my face, thanks, she was standing she could have stood next to the lady she was talking to, but no, she stands next to me, puts her butt in my face, and then screams, just like, has this loud, projected voice, louder than I'm talking right now, and I'm mad talking. Never mind the fact that I've got a sleep mask on and earplugs in and I'm clearly trying to sleep. No, 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 the world revolves around us. But I digress, let me get back to the journal. Needless to say, I didn't sleep the entire trip. Also, may I recommend never sitting next to the bathroom on a flight? It smells like piss the entire time, and countless strangers will bash into your shoulders because they are incapable of paying attention to where they are going, regardless of whether you are trying to sleep or not. Okay, but I've had this experience every time I've been on a flight because I usually look for aisle seats because I got really long legs and I like to be able to stretch out every now and then. Well, when you are on the aisle, there's always people who come waddling through, unable to pay attention to the spatial relativity of their own bodies. You get touched by people's butts, their backs, their stomachs, and all sorts of other extremities you don't want on your shoulder. And they touch you, and it's like, is it really necessary? Make an effort. Turn sideways. Now, I do that. I navigate around because I don't like touching strangers. I really don't like strangers touching me. And they come through, and they let their butts touch me. I don't want your butt sweat on me. Thank you. Oh goodness, here I go getting myself all worked up. Okay, well we will keep on going. Well, by the time the plane landed in Amsterdam, I was quite ready to get off. However, I was also in a slight panic because the plane was literally so late, I had 20 minutes to catch my connecting flight and get my passport stamped. Okay, those of you who are used to flying can probably feel the terror rising in your heart, the sound of connecting flight 20 minutes, massive airport in Amsterdam. Basically, for those of you who do not fly often, to understand, 20 minutes is not a lot of time in an airport because you have to make it through security, make it through customs where you get your passport stamped, and then also the airport is gigantic and you have to figure out how to get to where your, your terminal is, what gate you need to get to, and then you have to physically get there. It can easily take well over an hour to do this, so 20 minutes had me in a pretty blind panic. And to make matters worse, when the captain asked that passengers who did not have a flight within the next hour please step aside and allow the people with connecting flights to leave so they don't miss their flights, the entire plane got up and ignored him, clogging the aisles and effectively trapping all of us who were desperate to make our flights. Okay, the really stupid thing about this is I remember hearing a family a couple rows ahead of me saying, I don't care that our flight isn't for three hours. I am getting off this plane now. Girl, you have a flight in three hours. I have 20 minutes and you are going to make me wait for you, your big old butt, to waddle out, get your suitcase down, and let your whole family waddle out behind you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Why is it when you're running late you always get stuck behind the families that are comfortable at nothing faster than a snail's pace? Alright, sidetracking, sidetracking. Okay, so by this point I was running at a full breakneck speed down the terminal. I had been misdirected three times as to where I should go, and after getting stamped I was randomly selected by security to have my bags gone through. Oh gosh, okay, this airport was a nightmare. I remember going from person to person asking, where can I find this, where can I find this? And then them being like, oh, I don't speak English, sorry. Okay, I, at the time, in 2012, I was like, oh no, I'll find someone else. But now, okay, I know you people speak English. You speak like five languages over there. You're telling me you don't understand what I mean when I'm asking where customs is. You work in an airport, and you're telling me you don't understand the phrase for customs? Whoa, guys, going through these old journals is getting me all feisty. Sorry for being a little riled up. It's uncovering all the old trauma. By the time I got through all of that, I was literally seconds away from missing my flight. I just barely made it. The door was literally closing right behind me as I got on the plane. 
Now, the short flight to Florence was actually a little pleasant. By that point, I finally thought I could relax and that, perhaps, the worst was finally over. But I was wrong. Of course I was wrong. That was a Murphy's Law kind of day. When I landed in Florence, I waited at the baggage claim for my luggage. There was a huge crowd and I slowly worked my way to the front as the bags began to arrive. Slowly the crowd thinned and then suddenly I found myself all alone with no luggage. I went to the lost and found to inquire about my luggage. However, the woman told me that due to a mistake by the airline, my luggage had gotten on the wrong plane and would not arrive until the following day. So. There I was, my first time out of the country, all alone, in Italy, no luggage, no family, no clue what to do. I didn't even have proper footwear. I was wearing these thin little slip-on shoes for the plane only. I was planning on changing out of it. And I had over a mile to walk to get to the place where my school group was staying. Good old start, good old start. I nearly had a meltdown at that point, but was able to pull it together and make my way towards the hostel. From there on out, things finally started to get better. We got our rooms and we all went out to a late dinner. Though my feet ached from walking miles on very poor footwear and I was exhausted from nearly two days without any sleep, I still had a really good time. At least now, I know that without fail, Things can only get better from here. Let's hope so. If I remember correctly, there were a couple more bumps along the way, but mostly good stuff. And that's it for day one. We can move along to day two, which is much shorter, so we can go ahead and slip that one on in there. Day two. Day two was far better. I woke up to find my luggage waiting for me at the hostel's front desk, and then made my way to the breakfast room where I enjoyed some delicious homemade bread and jam. From there, we headed off to Santa Maria del Fiore, aka the church famous for Brunelleschi's dome. That's actually that big orangish red dome building that you see in like all pictures of Florence. It's essentially like the iconic thing that most people think of with Florence. We got a private tour that led all the way from the inside of the church, out the upper walls and catwalks, and onto the exterior of the building, and finally all the way up to the cupola of the dome itself. There were fantastic views, and right as we reached the top, all the church bells in Florence started going off. That was a magical experience. That's something that I wish we had here in more like American style cities. I don't know, I loved the cities there. I loved the feeling that they were built to be walked around. And I loved all the big churches and their bells, but when they're all going off, I know that might be annoying for some people, but I thought it was simply delightful. By the time we got back down, all of our legs were weak and shaky from the countless stairs we had climbed. I can't imagine what it must have been like for the monks who used to live there and make that climb multiple times a day. That would have been horrifying, and okay, one thing I failed to mention here was the freaking heat on top of it. I was there in the dead middle of summer, and it was 104 degrees, and I thought I was gonna die. I had a religious experience inside of that church, because let me tell you, by the time I got to the top of those stairs, I was seeing Jesus. After that, we headed to the huge outdoor market. There were hundreds of stalls, all selling various goods. One thing that was really fun that you don't see in America is that they don't discourage haggling, so you could get some really good deals if you were willing to barter for them. We then headed to the massive indoor part of the market, where we got some excellent sandwiches for lunch. We ate them in the nearby park, and from that point, the rest of the day was ours. And it looks like that is all I have for days one and two, so that's where I'm going to call it quits for today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this experience while I walk down memory lane. And uh, starting with day three next, I have not read that since 2012, so it's gonna be complete and utter surprise for me. So it, it'll be interesting. I don't even remember what I did on on day three in Italy. Like, I, I literally don't remember anything but specific events. I don't remember when they happened. I remember what city, but everything else is a blur, so this this will be interesting. All right, guys. Well, that's all there is time for today. Have you had a similar bad experience flying international? Have you had your luggage lost and been stranded or just had some really obnoxious people on the flight next to you? Go ahead and share in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and joining the family. 
Anyway, that's all. I will catch you next time. That's all for now. Bye-bye.